When it comes to connecting with your audience, especially when you're first starting out, you may not know who your audience is. Mm -hmm. um, what you will probably know is the message that you need. And a lot of times the message you need for yourself is going to resonate with someone else. And so when I was first starting out, I knew what my intention was as far as like, I'm creating this content for X, Y, and Z. Um, but a lot of my inspiration came from journal entries. And so I would write, you know, today I'm grateful for this, this and that, or I would create my mm -hmm. own journaling um, exercise and ask myself certain questions and write affirmations. And so I started sharing from a very personal place and also things that were maybe like, hey, Naomi, like you can do this, you know, or you need to um, really set some healthy boundaries for yourself. Welcome to the Push Forward Podcast. I am your host, Alex. And today I have the pleasure of having on our podcast, Naomi Hutchinson. She is a registered yoga teacher. She is a holistic health coach, um, but she's so much more than that. She's, she's, you know, teaching yoga for Nike, UCLA, and just as a creator, as an I, I would call you an influencer too, but I, you know, sometimes creators don't want to be called influencers, which we've had that conversation on the podcast here, Naomi. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll let you decide what you want to be labeled as, or if you want to have no labels and you just want to be Naomi and that's cool too. But, uh, I'm really excited to have you on the podcast today. We're going to dive deep into everything that you've been doing. You're going to tell us your story about how you got started with healthy and well, uh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to share my story and hopefully inspire some people who are going to listen. They're going to listen because your superpower is helping people learn and achieve their goals through holistic health and wellness programming. But, you know, if they go on your like Instagram, as I was uh, yesterday and today, you know, when you're doing some of the, the, the live interviews that you've done, I mean, you're, you're, the things that you say, like we think about, but you forget. And so it's just a check-in. And I honestly, I felt very well after I listened to some of your, your reels and stuff. I'm like, Oh, I, I could see why you're doing yoga. Cause you have this presence and, and just vibe that makes me feel calm. Now, admittedly, I've been doing yoga for over two decades. Um, and I'm not a typical yogi because I do it in my own office. So I don't, you know, congregate with the groups, but that's probably because I have four kids and I don't have time. Otherwise <laughs> I would be out there like doing the retreats and all the cool stuff you're doing. So before we get started and you give us the background about who you are, why you started, what you did, I would love to throw a curveball right at you and, and see if you're down and maybe we could choose the music later. Do you, do you do any narrated yoga um you know sessions like a guided meditation or just like yes so yeah so i have done those before mm -hmm. could, could we do like um let's do like not long let's do like a one to two minutes so for those that are listening today if they're feeling like you know oh my god stressed out we could like be like oh before we get into the show let's do a little guided meditation by yours truly naomi Hutchinson. So you, you pick the topic, you do the jam, and then later we'll put the music. Perfect. I can actually do a little grounding moment right here. I have my sound bowl so I could play. Yes. That. Whatever okay. you feel, this is your canvas. I'm okay. just here to, you know, I'm going to grab my sound bowl. Ooh, fantastic. And I definitely feel like I needed this today. So if our listeners like, like me feel like, man, it's Thursday, it's been like a big week. Whew, I'm ready for this. So take, take it away. The floor is yours. Okay, perfect. Um, so first, just come into as comfortable of a seated position as you can, just relaxing your shoulders down, making sure that your feet are rooted into the ground. You can maybe lower your gaze or close your eyes completely if that feels comfortable for you. And just take a deep breath in through your nose. And exhale out. Taking another breath in. 
and deep breath out. With each breath, taking your time, breathing in slowly and breathing out slowly. And as you focus your attention on your breath, allow everything that happened before this moment to just fall away. Allow anything that is to come to be in the future and allow yourself to rest in the here and now. Breathing in. Slowly exhale. Breathing in. And slowly exhale. One more time, breathing in. And breathing out. And now just notice how you feel. Notice if there's any areas in your body that are still holding tension that you'd like to release. Give yourself permission to soften here, to be gentle with yourself, and to acknowledge your feelings. When you're ready, take one final breath in through your nose. And this time as you exhale, let out an audible sound. Begin to wiggle your fingertips and your toes, flutter open your eyes and come back into the space. Oh, that was incredible. Good job. <laughs> I feel Thank like you. I hit the big reset button. It's, yes. it's not often that I do it over the podcast or, or 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 just video like this, but you know, when when you are committed to it, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's just so good. Yeah. And I love so. that you just got the the draw to bring that in. So mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah, <laughs> it worked. And I, I'm, I'm really like, that's going to be my call to action at the end of this podcast is that you, you just get, keep hitting rewind, like just, you know, keep playing it over and over and over because, yeah. you know, and I think what you did well too, with your, your, the guided meditation. So I do, my wife and I, uh, we homeschool our four kids and, uh, we do meditation. Um, uh, I think we, I think we moved it to Tuesdays now. Um, but again, we start the day with that, you know what I mean? Cause the four of them are going crazy. We're like, Whoa, yep. I'm out. <laughs> we got to get into school mode, but we got to get creative and just, and, and I'm telling you, we haven't done it for a year for two, for three. We've been doing it for almost six years since we started homeschooling and the benefits. I mean, I, I can't even, it, it's, it's not quantifiable. I like, it should be a prerequisite in every school. It really because it's, it's, it's incredible. And I don't, I mean, again, I'm telling a yoga teacher about this. You're probably like, yeah, no, I know. That's why I do what I do. But, um, Naomi, go, go ahead and, and tell us why you, you started healthy and well, and just give us the background, your story. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I started healthy and well in 2020, actually right, you know, in the middle of the pandemic. And I started it because I was going through my own health and wellness journey. Um, before doing this, I was a dancer and I went to college and studied dance and then moved to LA with the hope to pursue a professional dance career. And I was doing all of that. I was taking the classes, going to the auditions and everything. Um, but what I noticed was that mentally I was not uh, thriving. I was yeah. having a lot of insecurities when it came to showing up in a dance space. And so I went back to doing something that I'd actually picked up in college, which was affirmations. So I would have my affirmation practice. 
Um, but then I said, what can I do for my body, you know, to really take care of myself with all the like grueling um, hours spent dancing. And so I went to yoga, which again, I dabbled with a little bit in college, but it just didn't really stick. And so this time it stuck and I was practicing yoga every day, um, kind of like you just at home. I wasn't going to any, you know, group classes, but I would find teachers on YouTube and that kind of sparked my curiosity around, you know, what wellness resources are available to people who look like me because a lot of the teachers that i was finding like they were you know white women and i just was like okay you know i can learn from them kind of get the technique but i would love for there to be more representation and so that's what inspired me to start healthy and well and what that looked like was creating a directory called the healthy well black pages and that was kind of my first offering that i put out um, and alongside with that came a lot of virtual content and, you know, showing up on Instagram, but it really just came from a personal experience and me showing, you know, okay, this is how I revamp my refrigerator and this is how I shop differently and this is how I swap out these foods for these ones. Um, and it was just, you know, a documentation and hopefully something that was helping people as I was helping myself. In terms of using social media specifically to to reach out to the community, and of course, you know it's just a great place for you to engage with 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 people who um, are maybe looking for uh, uh, like like you said yoga, but that look like you, um, and maybe they're not finding it where they are. So social media, we, we think about it like virtually. A lot of people think of social media virtually. But in fact, you do the retreats and you do a lot of face-to-face on-premise as well. So tell me how you feel that social media has really helped you connect at the local level. Yeah. So social media has been a great tool, Um for one, you know, when you go from having your own page to then you decide, okay, I'm going to start a business or a brand and you create a page for that. I feel like it's an opportunity to get really specific and curate your feed in a way that has nothing to do with like, oh, I want to see my friends and, you know, that type of thing. And so I intentionally started following and looking for women, um, men who were just in the space, again, who look like me. So that was how I started to build my network. And a lot of relationships that I have today were actually built because I found them, you know, back in 2020. And then once COVID let up, you know, I could connect with them in person. But mm -hmm. Building the online presence um, allowed me to show the value of healthy and well. So I was sharing a lot of informational content at the time, you know, how to um, take care of your heart health. And I would, you know, put a link to a heart health test that people could take, or I would create, you know, these eBooks um, and do virtual yoga classes on YouTube. And so that whole time, I didn't really think, okay, I'm going to make this a business. I just knew that something in me was like, you need to share this information and share it as much as you can and be consistent. Um, and it worked in my favor so that when I was ready to do my first in-person class, you know, people already knew that I was about, you know, what I was sharing, that I really am in this lifestyle. Um, and they were interested in coming. But as things started to progress, it was me sharing my classes on social media that got people interested to come to more classes or to come to a retreat or that even caught the attention of brands, you know, like Nike that wanted to work with me um, and because they saw what I was doing, you know, throughout the and well. You know, it's really interesting. Um at least here in the United States, there is a, a stereotype that millennials, Gen Z, they want everything now, fast, 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 mm -hmm. which I think it's mostly, it mostly comes from the fact that social media and the, the technologies that exist are constantly changing and people have, you know, really demanded that they come in smaller and smaller bites. So you have way more content being created, yeah. uh, which is good in a way because then you create opportunities for everyone but it seems to me that when you look back from when you started 2020 and the way you went about with that strategic goal that okay i'm gonna first build this online and then i'm gonna do this then i'll connect with them then i'll do the class online it's 
not the stereotypical, you know, belief that many who aren't millennials or, or Gen Z hold, which is, oh, this generation just wants an L, but you didn't do it that way. It took you years to get to where you are. Mm -hmm. I definitely resonate with that, but I also do believe that, you know, my generation and millennials, like we do struggle with that. Um, okay. you know, speaking for myself personally, we see so much um, and you can see somebody who's the exact same age as you, who's maybe doing more things, who has more access to things um, and you don't even know their background. So you're, you're trying to compare yourself to that, but really you have no clue how they're even able to maybe go on these amazing trips, you know, once a month, um, what type of job they have, what family background they have. Um, and so I think that is probably one of our biggest challenges is that comparison. And that's what makes us kind of jump to doing something right away. I also think that this content creation influencer career is still so new and we're seeing people have great success with it fairly quickly um, that it's again, you know, adding to that and wanting to be like, okay, well, I can just do this too. Um, but we haven't quite seen, you know, what is the longevity of that look like? Or we're not always seeking to look at people who are maybe 10, 20 years older than us um, and understand, okay, if you've had a business all this time, what did you do to make sure you were in the right space to maybe sell your business or go into it full time? And I think that desire for education and wisdom and mentorship kind of helps to, I know it's helped me, um, but I know that it can also help other people like me who see stuff all the time and they can easily be like, well, they have this, I want it. And I'm going to just go for it without, you know, a plan or having a real conviction personally, other than seeing what somebody else is doing. In terms of like challenges and opportunities, we, we just talked about how you went from a digital platform to offering in-person yoga. And of course, later on the podcast, we'll talk about the retreat and some of the other things that you're doing. Clearly there were challenges. And then I think opportunities like Nike. Um, could you talk about some of the hurdles that you faced and how you overcame them? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I, like I said, I stumbled into entrepreneurship. I had no intentions of being an entrepreneur. Um, my dad, as you know, he has been an entrepreneur for a long time and I would always go to his events and I would see people in suits and I was like, I don't want that at all. I was so anti it. Um, and that's also just me, you know, being a creative and a performer. I'm like, I don't want to be in a suit. Like I want to be in like a lead car <laughs> on stage or something. Um, but again, it just, it happened. And so I had quite a few, um, setbacks. Oh, I shouldn't say setbacks, but challenges when I was first starting out, just because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and so I remember one of the first workshops I did, it was like a three day digital marketing crash course, something. And then from there I joined a, I think it was like a six week entrepreneurship course. And I remember I was trying to host this virtual summit. It was January, 2021. And I had nothing in place, really. I didn't have an email list. I didn't have a website. I just had my Instagram page. And I thought, you know, that would get people to sign up. And I was trying to charge for it. I wasn't even trying to do it for free. So I was really ambitious. Um, and I had gotten three people to, you know, be guest hosts and all this stuff. And no one was signing up. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, I'm failing. Um, and I talked to my mentor. And she was like, I'm going to be real with you. She was like, you shouldn't be focused on this right now. She said, focus on getting a landing page up, focus on building your email list, focus on really connecting with people beyond, you know, just the social media content and then, you know, do something free and then kind of grow it from there. And it was such a great push because after that, she actually told me to have my website done in three days. And I'd been sitting on it because I've done web design before, but this one just, it wasn't flowing for me. But with that pressure, I got it done in three days. Wow. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. Um, so that was my, my first challenge for sure. Um, another challenge I've had um, was actually with trying to get brand partnerships. And so before mm -hmm. I started working with Nike, there was another brand I was super interested in working with. I you know reached out to them. Um, I had a mentor, another mentor who knew someone with the brand. And so I connected with them. I was having a couple of meetings. I went into their store and after, 
it was all said and done, they didn't want to, you know, offer me their ambassadorship. And I was really, you know, confused. And I was like, I thought it was going to work out. I thought I was on the right track. I was very vocal about what I wanted, um, but it just didn't work out. And so that was a great example of like, you know, when God has something better for you because that didn't work out. Um, but a few months later, after I had started to host my rooftop yoga classes, um, there was someone who worked at Nike who reached out. Um, and I really just like, I had invited her to a class, but she could never come. But then mm -hmm. like a couple months after that, she was like, hey, there's an opportunity. I think you'd be interested in it. You know, can I send you more information? And that was mm -hmm. how I started working with them. And it was so um, effortless. You know, I wasn't trying to make it happen. It just kind of flowed naturally. Yeah, and that's powerful because I, I'm a big believer in that too. Mm -hmm. It's you, you know, you say, is it luck? Is it, you know, by design? Is it, you know, do you use science, art? Like, how do you make things yeah. happen? And we talk about that here on the podcast a lot, because a lot of creators, influencers, I say, well, you, you guys are all business people. You are not, you know what I mean? It's not, even if you're doing something that's just enough to uh, make a living and not mm -hmm. grow a business that, you know, is bigger than you and you have employees, doesn't matter. It's, it's a business, but we do talk about the 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 pressures of sometime pushing forward into things that you shouldn't be pushing forward yeah. and it sounds to me like your mentor really kind of reeled you back in now talk to me about your dad so uh hutch is uh -huh. a an entrepreneur and he's been in the world of business for a long time what growing up and seeing that um what's the biggest lesson that you learned because i i love the stories of uh um usually the parents and their children following mm. in that, that journey as business people. It's just so interesting because that's my background. So maybe that's why yeah. I find it interesting, yeah. but, but tell me what was your biggest lesson that you learned from Hutch? Of course, I feel like there's two. Um, one is a lesson that I feel like I was always learning through his journey, um, just as a man, as an entrepreneur, and that's to always have faith. Um, whenever things were like uncertain, he would always remind me to, to just pray and like have faith and, and believe in you know, the dream that you have. But the other one, which really came about once I started my own entrepreneurial journey was the power of building relationships. And I'm not talking about like just the networking and telling somebody what you do, but actually building relationships that take time um, and nurturance and care. And that has been one of my strengths, especially coming into the in real life version of my business versus, you know, just being on social media. But I was able to start to plant seeds with those relationships that I have now, you know, during COVID and just supporting, commenting, liking, you know, maybe attending like a virtual thing here and there um, to the point where now a lot of my friends and my colleagues, like I've been able to build strong relationships with and they look out for me and I look out for them. And so that's definitely the biggest lesson I've learned from my dad, because if anyone knows him, you know, he's super well connected. He's got a lot of great relationships people that speak highly of him and people that he loves to help and to serve. So I, I've learned that from him for sure. Well, you know, I have to give him a shout out. So yeah. he's going to listen to this episode. I know, <laughs> but, for the, but yeah, but for our listeners and our, you know, th th those in our community here, if you haven't checked out, we'll put it in the show notes, but definitely check out Icaba world network. Um, yeah. I give him a plug because it is a very powerful network. And I think everything that he does speaks to that lesson right there. So mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really awesome. Now, he's also big on education, you know, and I read a, a statement on your site that said, you know, knowledge is power, information is priceless, and education is the premise of progress. Can you expand on how healthy and well utilizes education to foster healthy habits among your audience? Yes. So one of the things that I think cemented where I was at and starting my business and just being on a wellness journey was that I was reading a ton. Mm. Um, I hadn't been like a casual reader before then, um, but it was like, I just couldn't stop reading and I was getting so much information. And I felt that if I could just share the facts and I can share you know, the research, you can do with it what you want to do. 
Um, and I'm really grateful that I did that looking back now because there's so many people on social media who are talking from a misinformed place um, and it can be harmful and people get led down the wrong pathway. So I think that education is paramount, you know, no matter what field you're in, um, taking the time to really learn, to study. Um, I do that just as a, a business owner. I study a lot of people's businesses. I look at their systems. I look at how they're connecting with people. Um, and taking the time to really learn and understand has helped me um, to just kind of learn as I go. Because again, I'm not a traditional uh, business owner. Not that there really is, um, but I haven't gone to a business school. So I'm always just like, okay, how can I learn? How can I grow? Um, and so I try to impart the education that I'm receiving, whether it's from a teacher training um, or from, from a webinar I go to, and I share it. So one of the ways I do that consistently is through my newsletter. Um, I send out a newsletter once a month and I'll usually share like a lesson of the month, something that's been really um, placed on my heart to kind of experience and practice. And then I'll always leave some resources for people to explore. And sometimes it's a book, um, it can be a podcast interview, um, an article and something like that, just so that people can really get the context for the practices that I'm doing, because you can see it and it's one thing to see it and be like, okay, I can just mimic that, but you have to really understand, you know, the meaning and the intentionality behind a lot of these practices. Well, yeah, it sounds like you're, you're very intentional with making your content um, more, it's not just more valuable, but you, you're, you're giving actionable um information that you can do something with it's not just there for you to you know mm -hmm. just 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 because there's so much of that already and i think yeah. you touched you touched a little bit on the inaccurate in content which gosh i think there's more of that than anything else but then there's also content um that i think is useless uh, um and again we can all be you know, uh, um, it's like art is subjective a little bit. It it, it uh, is, but, the, but, but some stuff isn't right. Naomi, I mean, let's be honest, like sometimes in with my kids, I do the same. If I see they're like watching something, I'm like, I need to stop you for a second because like, you know, what value is that, you know, thoughtless content really adding like, because you know so if you want to watch a little comedy maybe watch a show something that's been really scripted and you know there's lots of hands behind it the the subjectivity there is it's fine it's good like you said it's art but there are things a uh, lots of things online so set aside the inaccurate stuff there's lots of people that just put up stuff that you know you are watching them and you're saying you you put no thoughts into that you're just mouth and mouth stuff and then unfortunately because of the algorithm right? People are going to see that and think, oh, it's kind of like people who flip through the channels on TV, mm -hmm. whatever they're seeing, it, it was paid for, it, it, you know, it was intentional, except for online, the, the bar is very low. Anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I always talk about this on this podcast because it's not that I want to be too critical of influencers who are creating content that is just super silly and not adding any value to the world. But like, let's be serious. If you're going to take time to create content, you should be making an impact in the world. Um, and, and for those who are more consumers, because I say you're either a consumer or a creator. And mm -hmm. if you are just consuming stuff, man, between the inaccurate stuff and the silly stuff, you could just be killing all your brain cells. <laughs> Yeah, that, you know, and that's my take on it. And that's why I say I try to um, make sure that whoever we bring on the podcast are people who are really doing important things and making a difference in people's lives. And you certainly are. Now, in terms of those looking to follow sort of in your footsteps, give that actionable content, what advice would you give them uh, or encourage them about connecting with their audience? Yes. So <clears throat> when it comes to connecting with your audience, especially when you're first starting out, you may not know who your audience is. Mm -hmm. um, what you will probably know is the message that you need. And a lot of times the message you need for yourself is going to resonate with someone else. And so when I was first starting out, I knew what my intention was as far as like, I'm creating this content for X, Y, and Z. 
Um, but a lot of my inspiration came from journal entries. And so I would write, you know, today I'm grateful for this, this and that, or I would create my mm -hmm. own journaling um, exercise and ask myself certain questions and write affirmations. And so I started sharing from a very personal place and also things that were maybe like, hey, Naomi, like you can do this, you know, or you need to um, really set some healthy boundaries for yourself or, you know, this week you should actually make sure you do your physical routine before you get into work. And so sometimes those reminders that we tell ourselves, I think resonate more with an audience versus trying to be preachy because that can happen super easily and people can pick up when you're just kind of talking at them. So I feel like the best way to connect and talk with your audience um, is to speak from a personal place. So something that I do now, because I am very in tune with, you know, how Instagram works and what the trends are and things. So I'll probably put up a piece of content, a video, for example, and it's a short video and I'll have a quote, but in my caption, I always provide, you know, more information because yes, that will get their attention. But what I find is most um, impactful is getting that context for what you want to say. Um, but I think too, understanding your audience can look like asking questions. So the stories platform, mm. stories feature on Instagram is a great way to connect with your audience. You can do polls, you can say, hey, what would you like to learn about when it comes to health and wellness and give them three options um you can also like try out different content be like vote for which one resonates with you more like there's just so many ways that you can just get feedback in real time just by asking questions and also just, like asking friends that you really trust friends that you know are going to allow you to evolve because the thing is when you start showing up as a content creator and an influencer some of your friends may not be along the ride with you they may be like oh i'm not into that or maybe they're just a consumer and they're just not understanding what that all entails so maybe reaching out to some content creators or some influencers and saying hey can you look at this piece of content and let me know what you think like how can i improve it i think it's just really good to ask questions and to be curious when it comes to understanding who your audience is and how to best serve them with your content yeah it sounds like there's a lot of, uh, and I know you didn't use this word cause it's overused authenticity, mm -hmm. but it, it sounded to me like there was a lot of that there, right? Like very intentional and really just being yourself and not trying to project in ways that I think there are, that was more prevalent, maybe a few years back, maybe before COVID. And then mm -hmm. I feel like what you see today across any of those channels is that what works is when people are real and you could tell when they're real and once in a while you find one that you're you know you'll you'll you, you the whole thing is all orchestrated right uh, but but they, but they don't last that's the truth they don't last right yeah. um okay you m did a post the other day um and i was looking at this one registered with me um unpacking self-worth um mm -hmm. i think you were on a podcast maybe mm -hmm. I, I thought that, that was so powerful because like you were talking about how when you started, you were doing affirmations and, and things like that. For, specifically for women, you know, how important do you, do you think, because especially young girls, right? So we're doing a lot of stuff, a lot of um, work in the world with nonprofits around internet safety and especially for young girls, right? Mm -hmm. And teens. And I feel like what you're talking about there, the self-worth and your affirmations is such a good message. So for those who are listening to the podcast here, presumably some are parents, what advice do you have for them to work with their kids to curate content that is really positive for their, especially for girls, for, you know, self-worth and image? Yes, of course. I think that um, as far as curating the content, you know, as a parent to just be as present as you can to really mm -hmm. monitor what is popping up on the feed mm -hmm. um, and just who is being followed, what's being suggested and just really monitoring that. But beyond that, practices like you do with your kids as far as meditation, um, taking time to really speak with your daughter and tell her like who you are on the inside is the most important. You know, what you have on the outside is an accessory and it's beautiful, but your heart, you know, that is really the thing that makes you special. Um, and just knowing that 
sometimes the things like, oh, you know, who's going to be your date to the prom, like something like that, that's so innocent, can also start to um, allow a woman to associate her self worth with having a partner. Um, and so to just be very mindful um, and to also when your daughter is like, okay, I do want to date or I want to have a boyfriend, um, to take the time to sit down with her and say, okay, like, what do you like about this young man or this woman? Um, you know, how does this make you feel? And then to be clear that, okay, just know that whatever partner you decide to start to um, date and build a relationship with, they're just going to be an asset. You know, they're not going to complete you in any way. You're mm -hmm. complete own and just kind of re-emphasizing those messages because even if the parent doesn't say it when they go out into the world they're going to hear oh you're looking for your other half mm -hmm. or you know when are you going to if, you know when they're grown up when are you going to have kids when are you going to get married like all of that stuff yeah social and, pressures yeah and i mean same thing you know with the job you know what job do you have so i think just allowing for young women to be able to grow and evolve to have different interests um, and to really inquire and ask them, like, what makes you happy? You know, what do you envision for yourself? If you could dream as big as you want to dream, what would that look like? Um, and that'll just help you to really understand and just talk to your daughter in a way that she feels like, okay, I can be as expansive as I want to. And I'm still going to be loved, you know, I'm going to be supported. So the more that you can like support and nurture um, your daughter, I feel like she'll be good and that self-worth will be strong um, and just allowing for her to fall so that you know she has a place to go to and say hey i messed up or you know my heart is broken you know because that'll happen mm -hmm. um and just allowing to be that safe space for her is a really good thing to do that is powerful advice it really is and i think it leads us right into our last topic here that we were talking about self-worth here how about on May 17th through the 20th, the I Am Worthy retreat is happening. Tell us where, tell us what that's all about. And then, of course, we'll put the link in the show notes. Of course. Yes. Yeah. So I'm super excited about this retreat. Um, like you said, it's called I Am Worthy and the theme is self-worth. I created this retreat to be a space for women of color who are ambitious in their careers, um, who do a lot for their families and maybe have not had the time um, to pour into themselves. I want this to be a reset and a reminder that you are worthy of care and love first, and that when you fill your cup up, then you can feed others from an overflow um, of the love that you've given yourself versus being the last person um, mm -hmm. you tended to. And so the retreat happens in Temecula, California, like you said, from May 17th to the 20th. And Temecula is a beautiful place in California. It's kind of like the wine country of Southern California. And so we will have daily yoga and meditation. Um, you'll get to experience a sound bath, like with the sound bowl I was playing earlier. Yeah, there'll be massages on site, so a full day of pampering, um, some delicious plant-based meals as well, so you can nourish your body. And we'll also be going on a wine tour, so you can just get out, kick your feet up, relax, and just have a really nice time. Um, I had an opportunity to host this retreat similarly back in September of last year, and the women who attended, they had a wonderful time. Um, we still have a group chat that will like, you know, drop messages in from here and there and they just felt very renewed um, and just reminded of the importance of taking care of oneself and to just be present and enjoy, you know, the beauty that's all around us. Well, there you have it, everyone. Naomi Hutchinson with Healthy and Well. Naomi, thank you for being on the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you. And and I'm going to love replaying that uh, meditation for sure. I loved it. You, you are great at guiding the meditation. So uh, good luck with the retreat. And I'm sure we'll, we'll bring you back on the show at some point. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. And for you guys, our listeners here at the Push Forward Podcast, make sure that you share the podcast, get, get this great content with like some of our great guests like Naomi out there with, with, with the people that you love. Cause we're, we're about helping creators and influencers. And, um, if you, if you have any ideas for the show, I always tell you, reach out to us. We're always looking for great guests. So thank you again for listening. <laughs>